Um, there is a saying that says, the family that prays together stays, stays together. together. Mm-hmm. And I just want to note, this brother David, brother Dave said, ma'am, our first date, we haven't, we haven't worship and prayer devotion. And that was 21 years ago. You're now listening to the No Pills Podcast, your best resource for cultivating meaningful, healthy, long-lasting, romantic relationships that bloom into strong marriages. Welcome to No Pills. Welcome to No Pills. (laughs) Ha ha, we back. Love fully scripted, friends. We're back. We're in the studio today with a, a special treat. I have uh, David and Rocky made with me today, friends. Two good, good friends of mine. Um, out here in Kentucky, we met in Kentucky uh, maybe like two years ago now. I believe two years ago now. And so it's been a, a blast getting to know them. And you know, over here, no pills, we like to highlight uh, the things of God and doing it God's way. And my friends here have been married for 22 years. 21. 21. Going on 22 22 years. 22 this year. Mm -hmm. Um, Folks have been married this long. We want to be able to hear from you, get some feedback from you, get your insights on what's going on in popular culture, how everything is, uh, how it looks to you from this perspective, being married this long. Are these things rational to you, not rational? So I just want to delve into that with you and hopefully get some insights for my community, for my audience, right? For all my uh, non-married people and people thinking about being married. But a little bit of background on you both, if I, if I recall correctly, from California to Alabama, from Alabama to Kentucky. That's, no, from... California to Alabama, back to California, then to Kentucky. Okay, back to Kentucky. Okay, all right. Now, what was the reason for the move? You know, I like to say first that um, better environment to raise our kids. Okay, all right. Um, And then two, uh, we had some good friends that were on a ministerial assignment out there. Okay. And when they finished up, they said they had always wanted to come to Kentucky to do some ministry work. Okay. So... My wife and I were like, you know what, we were ready to get out of California. Um, We'd come out and looked around. So it was, it seemed like the Lord was like, okay, it's time. Mm -hmm. So, you know. California is not a good place to raise kids? Well, see, the thing (laughs) is, we were in Los Angeles, California. All right. We were in L.A. All right, L.A. And uh, now we live in a little bitty town. About mm-hmm. 6,000 people. Come on. It's night and day. Two different worlds. All right. So really, it's not only better for our children, it's better for us too. Amen. Amen. Okay. And was that an easy transition? Like in all honesty, was it an easy thing to do? Were there any sacrifices involved in that transition? You know, for me, was it easy? I would say no, because mentally, leaving family, you know, born and raised in California, all your family's there practically. Mm-hmm. Um, when that's all you know, mm-hmm. and then to get up and to move somewhere else is like, ooh. So you know those thoughts would play in my head from time to time, but it was never to the point where now I'm like totally fearful. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Okay. And then for us, um, I left my job. All right, talk to me. My good L.A. County job. Okay. You know, my career. Really. When, you, when you say good, do you mean you liked it or was good paying? It was good paying. <laughs> okay. It was good paying. I had <laughs> been there for almost 20 years. Um, and so, yeah, it was a sacrifice. Sacrifice. It was a sacrifice. sacrifice. Now, I remember when uh, my wife and I, we had left the city as well. We had actually moved to northern Idaho. And we took, like, pay cuts in half. <laughs> mm. mm-hmm. uh, yes, brother. Yes. Yes. Get some of that mm-hmm. pay cut in half. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what, what's going on? Yeah. Um, but for the peace of mind, mm-hmm. um, being out in the wilderness, closer to nature, closer mm-hmm. to God, uh, we found the sacrifice to be worth it too. Absolutely. You know, you know, oh. so I can, I can relate. So I just knew there was, there had to have been a sacrifice there Absolutely. Um, in the financial arena. Now, David, you mentioned, um, Family. Now, for both of you, and I'll start with you, Dave. How 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 was your upbringing? Like just oh. growing up, were you coming from a two family household, single family household? What was uh, your upbringing? Um, like? Wow, actually, there was like no one 
Okay. Father wasn't there. Mother died when I was a year and a half. So when you speak, you know, when you hear like dysfunctional, it was like, yeah, to the T because my grandmother raised us. Mm. There were five of us. I'm one of five, the youngest of five, actually. And so my grandmother didn't want us to be wards of the court. So at the age of 72, she's taking us. Wow. And she's legally blind. So what does that mean? That means now her children are coming back to care for her. And what do they get? Their nephews and nieces. So it's like, it's one of those, when your kids are already grown, you pretty much don't want to deal with raising kids all over again, you know? So, and I felt it. So it wasn't like, you know, oh, this is great. No, there were some there were some times where you felt neglected that mm. you didn't feel like you were loved or anything like that. But, you know, my grandmother was there and you know, my siblings would probably tell you that I was her favorite. Okay. I don't know if it's because I was the youngest or what, but you know, it wasn't a a walk in the park like mm. I said, you know, to see just to go through what most households go through, but yet still, um, I think without having my mom there, huge difference, definitely. And without having my dad there, huge difference. But it was I was okay with not having him there. Okay. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, I tell people to this very day that was probably the best thing he ever could have done mm-hmm. was to be like you keep them, you raise them. There was no fuss, no fight over, you know, mm-hmm. I want, you know, my son, my daughter. Mm-hmm. No, it wasn't any of that. Now, so. my father, my father was drugs and alcohol. So by the time I was like 11, 11-ish, my mother had ended up kicking my father out because his addiction was going to kill everybody. Mm-hmm. It was going to take everybody mm-hmm. out. So in your case, was it was it good he wasn't around because he had like an addiction problem or he was abusive or just wasn't there? Or did he just made the decision just not to be involved and you saw that as good as well? Yeah, I, I see that. No, there was no addiction that I know of. Okay. It wasn't like he smoked or drugs or anything mm-hmm. like that, you know. But the lifestyle okay. was different. Okay. And so, you know, God has us going through things even at young, early ages that we don't know anything about but that helps to shape and make us help make us also in to who we are. That will help, I think, who with he wants us to and who he wants us to become. Yes, with helping to reach others. You know, people have a tendency to look at you and say, "Oh, you never went through anything." Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you said, "The man, if you only knew." You, only knew. you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah I, I know what it's like to have that. You feel abandoned, but like I said, my, and I think my grandmother knew that, mm. and to give as much love as she could, how she knew to give it. You know, that's what makes the difference. But, you know, trying to teach God, show God, you know, because truly. So did you grow, did you grow up with God? Yes. In I grew up in an Adventist household. Okay. Um, born and raised. It's all I've ever known. Okay. So, you know. So it's, you grew up, you grew up with God. Yes. I grew up, no, it's funny. I grew up um, with a, with a um, non-denominational, faceless, no Mm-hmm. No, no knowledge, God. Um, we pray before meals. We pray before bedtime. That was about it. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that God had a son. I didn't mm-hmm. know there was the Holy Ghost. I didn't mm-hmm. know I was a sinner. So, um, but I do thank the Lord that my mother, we pray before meals and bedtime because mm-hmm. it just planted a seed that eventually blossomed and grew, which mm-hmm. was great. Um, Rocky, for you, how was your upbringing? So I grew up pretty much in a single parent household with my mom being that one. Wasn't born and raised in the church, but early on, I was probably about seven when my mom started going to church. Um, And, you know, we went to church because we had to go to church. You know, it became my own later on. Okay, all right. Um, All right. Probably late teens or so. Okay. Being being brought up in a single family home, did did you like it, not like it? Did you notice it, not notice it? I loved it. I enjoyed my childhood. Um, and I, too, uh, thought I, w- I thought at the time I was better without my dad. And maybe I was, mm. you know, in retrospect. Okay. Do I think 
do I know that um, family should be made up of both parents? They need that. Absolutely. Right, right, right. right. Um, no, on, your, on your father's side, any drugs, any alcohol, any? Yes, uh, drugs and then his lifestyle. You know, okay. He was um, he was a player. All right. Ladies men. Mm -hmm. Not you're doing too much. Mm -hmm. Couldn't keep it home. Mm -hmm. keep, keep it home. Take your home base. Yeah, unfortunately, that does happen sometimes. Because yeah. mm -hmm. uh, this is segue, segues right into my next thought or question I want to ask you both. So with the childhood you have, um, father being a player, both parents not being around, um, or either parents, in your case, Dave, why did you guys then decide to even get married still? Right, because a lot of people would be turned off mm. right from the idea concept of marriage. Like for my, for me, since I saw my parents separated, mm -hmm. I had noticed all these people in my life getting divorced. I said, well, "I'm not getting married. I'm just gonna shack up with somebody." Mm. I'm like, why, "Why get married just to get divorced?" So that was the idea that I had, and mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, um, I'd like to hear from both of you, like, how come it doesn't know you guys had that fear or concern? You still decided to get married. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't look at what I saw in my immediate circle and think that there was a problem with the institution okay. because of, you know, maybe the way this person acted or even what I saw around me, people who got divorced. All I knew, well, well let me say to a degree, Hollywood kind of shaped my idea okay. of marriage as a young person. Um, how so? Um, you know how it goes on Hollywood. In terms of, you know, <laughs> the the butterfly type, you know, this is good. This is the way it's supposed to be, and okay. you live happily ever after. Okay, the white, the white, the white knight, white horse. Right, right, armor, right, right. Sweep me off my feet. Right, right. Like it's a good thing a good overall. Thing. Uh -huh. And just growing up as a Christian, okay. um, I knew it to be an institution, a God ordained institution. Okay, all right. So um, the Christian background helps you out. Absolutely, absolutely. Um and so, yeah, I didn't write the institution off just because it didn't work for certain people. Okay. I didn't want to be out as far as why we wanted to get married. I didn't want to be like in the atmosphere and wondering what's really going on with you, you know, without the, the commitment of marriage. Like, that's no good for me. Okay. All right. And Dave, for you? Wow. Um, I think I knew, like you had mentioned, as far as why shack up, get married just to get divorced, that I knew shacking up wasn't an option okay you know what i'm saying even certain things that are just there that you're like okay i'm not going to do that um because i did see how marriage was like i say for, it's almost like my childhood was i don't want to say erased but that wasn't taken into consideration okay when looking at it then right i think for me what hit most was probably around that high school, you know, graduating, and then what I saw there, because that's where um, key moments came into play for me okay. as far as what marriage was. Um, so before college, I was living with my aunt and uncle. And my uncle Eldridge and Aunt Elvira were what to behold. You know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. So it was like, okay, that this is good. You know, it, I felt awkward being there because it was a total contrast of what I was used to mm. with how they did in their home. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so, so seeing that and then after school coming back, staying with my sister and her husband once again. So it's like, okay. And then all the other couples that were around that were married. So it was like, and doing it well, Right. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, that are still married to this day, 20, 30 some years plus. And it was like, OK, this isn't oh, this can work. You know, why? Mm -hmm. can, why can't I? Amen. I mean, there's no reason mm -hmm. why God can't bless my union with who he has for me to do, you know, the same thing. So it's interesting. So I had the same like revelation once I got to college, moved out, was becoming a Christian looking at my faith. And then it's like the Lord opened my eyes to all these people that I hadn't really noticed before in my mm -hmm. family that were mm -hmm. happily married. Mm -hmm. You know, on mm -hmm. uh, the older generation, my grandmother, my grandfather, on both, uh, on my mother's side, uh, my, my grandmother, and then my grandfather, they married siblings, they, they, brothers and sisters married each other in my family. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so makes it a little closer on that side of my family. But 
it was this kind of list of people that I saw in my family that were happily married. That I, that I didn't notice before. Mm. Like the negative was outweighing the positive mm. and I just didn't see them. Mm. So it sounds like you had the same type of model. You started to realize like, oh, I got people around me that are happily married. Why wouldn't I want that for myself right. as well? Mm -hmm. um, which makes which makes complete sense. Okay, so how did you know that Rocky was the one, Dave? And then Rocky, how did you know that Dave was the one? For me, going in was, you know, I've said, all right, level head on her shoulders, okay. right? Attractive, of course. Loves God. In, in any particular order there? Was there an order? <laughs> I wouldn't say there was necessarily an order. I mean, you definitely got to love God. Amen. Right? Okay. All right. So, you know, loving God. Love God. Okay. Attractive. Attractive. Okay. Head on her shoulders. Okay. Level head Level on her head. shoulders. Yeah, good, good head on her shoulders. Exactly. <laughs> good head on her shoulders. So, you know, because once again, when you've, you've dated around enough to say, mm, you know, mm. that I was unable to check that all three of those boxes. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And okay. so it was... It was one of those that you're like, mm, mm, I don't know, I don't know. But when coming to her, and then it was just topped off with, you know, if she's seen, this is who I am, right? You know, some want to put on that front. You know, they want to impress right, to right. get them. And then after they get them, then it's like, mm, so you see me, this, what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and if she were able to say, you know what, okay, still... Then, I mean, I don't want to say I haven't changed. I know I've changed. I would like to think that I've changed, but it's one of those that I've changed now, hopefully more spiritually grown. growing with Christ mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. versus in the beginning, you know, when you're not, it's one of those, you are just trying to do things on your own per se, but I'm sure we'll probably get into other of these questions later on. Right, right, right. So... Okay. All right. So for me, um, I had kind of been through the mill with guys mm. through to the, the one I dated before Dave, okay. who was not a Christian. Mm. Now, growing up mm. um, in a Christian home, I knew I shouldn't be unequally yoked. Okay. Right? All right. But I was unequally yoked. Okay. For those who may not know, marrying someone who's not or being in a relationship with someone who's not a Christian. Right. Right, 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 right. right, right. right. To the point where I was actually engaged to this guy. Wow. Uh, that didn't work. My mother was praying. Mm. And she was praying hard. Mm. And um, we were actually good to go until we got engaged. And that thing started going down here hill quickly. Interesting. And so when I met David, well, I met him in college, but we didn't date in college. Okay. When we reunited, I kind of knew him. I grew up with his cousins. And uh, on our first date, he had worship with me. Mm. And I was like, stop the presses and drop the mic. <laughs> this is it, right? Uh, um, so it was just good and refreshing. Man of God. Man of God. We connected on the point of God. And so that, you know, along with all the other good stuff, you okay. know, he, he had a career. Okay. You know, I yeah. was you know, equally attracted to him. It was just, you know, all good. But right. that God thing that sealed God thing the deal. Sealed the deal. Mm -hmm. Brother prayed for you. Listen, to all the listeners right now, brother brother had worship on the first, first day. Date. Let's go. Let's step it up. Let's yeah. step up the game. That's what I'm talking about. Nice gentle rebuke for us, gentlemen. <laughs> let's, let's take that nice gentle rebuke we just received. Were there any other official like criteria you guys had as far as thoughts of marriage? Like, did you guys have discussion about how many children you wanted before you got married? Was there any uh, discussions before you sealed we, the deal? Absolutely. Uh, when we got married, we weren't having any children. Okay. You know. All right. We, that changed. We, we, that changed. <laughs> we were on the same page, one accord. We were like, this world is crazy. All right. You know. All right. Why would we want to bring some babies into this? Right. right. But you know, God ordained marriage, and he told Adam to be fruitful and multiply. He did. And that thing just kind of naturally came to us. I mean, we got married, and, you know, after a while, we wanted, you wanted to him. procreate. You know, let, let me interject. What really stands out for me is during the counseling. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, counseling? What counseling? Marriage counseling. Oh, pre okay. Premarital pre yes. pre counseling. And right. Take what pain. sticks out in my head was... The pastor was like, 
you know what, you'll get to a point where you've poured so much love into each other mm. that you'll want to now mm. pour love, love into someone else. Wow. And because, yeah, before that, I want no kids. Mm. You know, I wanted my coupe, whatever car mm. it was, just two, just big enough for me and her. Mm. And we can do things and this and that and the other versus, hey, hey, ah, that's cramp in my style yeah, you know yeah, they cry they poop ride up all hours of the night and mm-hmm. that just wasn't where i was but you know it's like i said i think after listening to that so after being married I was like you know what yeah it it, it might be time right? right so right all right let me give you the premise let me give you the premise of no pills all right tell me if you agree or disagree so when we go buy a vehicle mm-hmm uh, we get a owner's manual with that vehicle. Mm. Okay. That owner's manual comes from the manufacturer. It tells us how to operate, maintain that vehicle. Mm-hmm. Uh, when when to get routine maintenance, what type of fuel to put in it so that we can have a safe, secure ride for as long as possible in that vehicle. Mm-hmm. I liken this to our earthly relationships, to romantic relationships. Those romantic relationships are the vehicle. The Bible is the owner's manual and God is the manufacturer. So here at No Pills, I'm about bringing us back to the manufacturer, to mm-hmm. the owner's manual, because I believe you're not, you you have to listen to the manufacturer when it, when he, when they tell you how to operate the vehicle. Absolutely. Mm. Mm, absolutely. <laughs> Thoughts on that? Anybody, do you, what, <laughs> does that sound reasonable to you, logical to you? All the way. All the way. All the way. And uh, that has to be where society has gotten it wrong. Mm. You know, they don't visit the manual, right? Mm-hmm. And so the the thing doesn't work out. As mm-hmm. soon as you said that, the first po- thought that popped into my head mm-hmm. was not that we're them, but the children of Israel. Okay. For the All time right. that they wandered in the wilderness and they didn't, their clothes didn't wear out or, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's what going, having that manufacturer, the manual does for you. He mm-hmm. takes you through. You you might be a so-called older model, but he's okay. preserving it. Mm-hmm. He's taking mm-hmm. care of it. And that's the beauty of it. When we turn it over and we look at it and, you know, oh, wow. Oh, well, what does the Bible have to say? What does God, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's, like I said, for me, the beauty of it. Mm-hmm. 40 years, man. 40 years. Most of us don't have cars that long. You know what I'm saying? We're ready to switch them out after two Mm -hmm. because we can lease them. Mm -hmm. But to keep that, and yeah, you got to have maintenance and routine this and making sure you're checking the oil and doing this. And so. But you'd not know that or when to do it if you didn't visit that manual. Exactly. That manual definitely tells you. And it's, and it's one of those that you want to, you don't want to wait until that, you know how they call them now, the dummy light comes on. And that check engine light? Yeah, when that comes on, it's like, uh-oh. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. as you learn, you really depend more and more on that manual. Mm-hmm. That manual now becomes like, uh, the, the, what does the manual say? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you tried in the beginning, oh, I know. I know when to change the oil. Yeah, yeah. I know when to Yeah, I know, I know, yeah. Nah, you really don't. <laughs> yeah, you need that manual. <laughs> exactly. You got to ask the manufacturer. Yep. Right. Yeah, why would you not ask the manufacturer? Yeah, he designed. Right. Yeah. He designed it how yeah. it should be. And as you, as you consult that manual and you watch your successes with the manual and your failures mm-hmm. without, you'll quickly learn, oh yeah, mm-hmm. this this manual is good. This manual is good. Yeah. Yeah. So, that sounds like you're saying at the very least you should give it a try. Absolutely. <laughs> you should give it a try. Absolutely. I right? uh, do it. Do, do a little test on it. Absolutely. Uh, what I'm saying is, let's do it. Let's do it God's way and see what the outcome is, what the mm-hmm. results are. Uh, let me read you some uh, mm. a statement here from uh, this is from Forbes.com. It says in 2021, a total of 689,308 divorces occurred across the 45 U.S. states that report this statistic. So not every not every state reports it. Mm. Okay. <laughs> During that same year, 1.9 million marriages occurred. Mm -hmm. It says nearly 70% of divorces are initiated by the wife. In addition, over 50% of divorced wives 
never want to remarry, while only 30% of men express the same sentiment. What do you think the number one reason for divorce is that's being reported? Finances. Finances. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> it's not the number one, but it is on the list. Okay. Not anymore. Huh? No, oh, no. oh, wow. <laughs> um, lack of commitment is the most common reason mm. given by divorcing couples, according to a recent national survey. So being married as long as you both have been, what enters your mind when you hear lack of commitment is the most common reason given by divorcing couples? I get that. You get it? Yeah, uh, because if I go into this thing without the commitment, I'm not going to stick it through. What does that look like practically? That means I'm here, period. Mm -hmm. period. Uh, no matter, you know, how much we disagree, you get on my nerves, you know, whatever. we have a communication problem. We don't know how to communicate. Okay, well, we got to rough it through. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to pray it through. Mm -hmm. Let me say this right now. I, I can hear my listeners. <laughs> I can see the comments already. Um, where there are issues of, divo I mean, abuse, Mm -hmm. Okay, we're dealing with a different ball of wax, Absolutely. right? My advice always to anyone who may be in an abusive relationship is to separate. I'm not saying get divorced mm -hmm. immediately, mm -hmm. but to separate and see if counseling can be right. had. Right. If you're getting a divorce, I mean, if you're getting abused, get out of there. Get out of there. Don't suffer that abuse and get Certainly. the counseling and the help you need. I have mm -hmm. some other thoughts on that, too, but I won't peel all that back right now. When you hear when you hear lack of commitment is the most common reason given by divorcing couples, what comes into your mind when you hear that? That one of them, if not both, have checked out. Yeah, you don't want to sit there, whether or not you have no coping skills or, mm -hmm. you know, you just don't do well with confrontation or, you know, you've always had things, you were used to having things your way. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. now all of a sudden someone else is, no, we, we can't do it like that. Well, why not? How You know, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. That commitment is like, you know, they don't realize that for better or for worse, you know, I can't leave just because, you know, you you squeeze in the toothpaste from the middle. You know what I'm saying? There's no, like, but you, we laugh, yeah, but yeah, you but know it's how real. It's, it's real. that's real, it's believe real. it or not. It's real. So it's, it, that's what I, that's what comes to my head, let alone there's no commitment with. I'm sticking it out with God now. Right. Um, God, you said, come on, man. Dude, why? How come? You know. Like this. I'm committed to you. Like this. Mm -hmm. And because I'm committed to you, you're helping me. You're shaving off my rough edges and you're doing the same for my spouse. So, you, so you're saying to me, what I'm hearing you saying is that my commitment to God reinforces my commitment to my wife. Correct. And, and really, uh, my commitment to my spouse is born out of my commitment to God. Mm -hmm. um, there is no no commitment. He's the author mm -hmm. um, of that. Mm -hmm. um, and counterintuitively, the enemy is the author of lack of commitment. Divorce. Yes. Yeah. Becomes a, a self thing, a selfish thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I can't do this, and I can, and I, 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 I. Um, but it is God who, like himself, stepped out of himself to, to, to make the sacrifice for us. We must do that for our spouses. Sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So I wonder, in, in, those, in those relationships that are divorcing and there's a lack of commitment, I wonder if there's, I wonder if there's a lack of sacrifice as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, just wondering if there's a lack of sacrifice there as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with the, numbers I, with, with the numbers I gave you, what would you say to this generation that's looking at these, this data— most women are filing for divorce. 35% of people end in divorce. I'm just going to stay single marriage. I'm just going to maybe be shack up with somebody. I'm good. Like you can, we, we lose, we, men lose in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. We lose our shirts. We mm -hmm. lose our house. We lose our kids. Um, what are your thoughts on that? What would you say to someone who's kind of, who has those concerns? You know, I would, once again, I, you know what, if I can do it, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't come automatically wired to communicate. I didn't come automatically wired to do a whole bunch of things that have to be done, that need to be done. Um, there's still some things that I'm learning, but to sit there and say, you know what, I'm, I'm not willing to try. They say, they, they say 
Well, people are going to tell you a whole bunch of things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You may see some things also, but it's never, I could have, I could have made a difference. I could have, you know, it's a choice that the individual does make once they get into it to be faithful, be happy, be, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's the choice. And so decision. we have individuals that are very bitter, that were bitter before while single. Mm. That may have thought, you know, well, marriage will make me happy, mm. you know, and it's mm, think you might be going into it for the wrong reason. So control, you you can create your happiness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you couple that with God and it's like, oh, my goodness, now you take it to a whole nother level. So I believe that in all things, whether mm. it's marriage, whether it's being single, mm -hmm. we need to consult the the operator's manual. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the foundation for happiness, whether you are married or whether you're single. So you consult the, uh, the operator's manual. Does God tell me to shack up? Is, is that where I'm going to find fulfillment? That's yeah. not it. Right. Find fulfillment. Um, mm -hmm. You consult the operator's manual for marriage. If you're not going to do that, you can expect failure. You can expect not to be happy whether you're married or not. If you consult the manual, you can expect success. You can uh, expect happiness. And so I think like you said, or you said, we're given a choice and we can follow the instructions or not, mm -hmm. but that will determine the outcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, a thought that I've had in response to this, 35% of marriages will end in divorce. Well, that means there's 65% that mm. won't. Mm. Right? So, like, you don't have to be a part of the 35. Right. right. And let's say it's 50. You know, let's say it's 50, 51 percent. Okay, there's still another 50 percent mm. that are going to be just fine. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. or just not going to get divorced. And Dave, I love what you said. Like, hey, man, I can do it. I didn't come pre-wired to be this awesome husband. Mm -hmm. I had to learn. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes there's an unwillingness on our parts um, male and female, and I'm kind of picking on men here sometimes to want to learn how to be a husband. Mm -hmm. I think in modern thought process, hey, if I go to work, I'm doing everything I need to do as a dad, as mm -hmm. a father, mm -hmm. as a man. I'm like, well, mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you're not. yeah, no, not really, mm -hmm. not really, not really good. I'm glad you're working. Mm -hmm. glad, glad, I'm glad you, that's good. Mm -hmm. But there's more to being a father, more to being a husband than just going to being out 40, 50 hours a week. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's just so much there. All right, there is uh, a buzzword, a keyword, mm -hmm. hookup culture. Mm. All right, it's called hookup culture. Mm. Okay, so online, oh, it's all the rave. It's all the <laughs> it's all the discussion. All right, about hookup culture. All right, it is one that accepts and encourages casual sex encounters including one night stands and other related activity without necessarily including emotional intimacy, mm. bonding or a commitment through relationship or a committed relationship. When you hear that, can you have sexual intercourse without emotional intimacy, bonding or commit? Like who, who your, th your thoughts on this? T just talk to me. Let's just, let's, 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 let's. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't think it's, it's possible. Um, in, in fact, we were just listening to something earlier today where this doctor okay. was talking about uh, the number of his patients, young patients that okay. come in um, with these promiscuous uh, lifestyles uh -huh. and are messed up. Breaking mm. down in tears. Yeah. So, so you're seeing emotionally. Not, emotionally okay. messed up. Okay. So what, what kind of doctor was he? Do you um, He's a Family, family medicine family doctor. doctor, yeah. So, so I'm thinking they were coming in for STDs or STIs. <laughs> yeah, he was talking about that too. Okay, but they're also coming in with emotional damage. Mm -hmm. emotional, emotional damage, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because you can write it off as, you know, a, a light thing yeah, and yeah, yeah. you try to mentally uh, mm -hmm. detach from it. Right. But it's there. It's there. Mm -hmm. But it's there. This almost goes to show how old I am. Uh, this hooking up, I was like, what? Hooking up. <laughs> uh oh, you know. Hook up but culture. Hook up culture. I put the culture behind it, too. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't like a hookup incident. It's a culture. Hook up right. culture, brother. And I am just taken by it that, once again, 
what flashes in my head is, you know, whatever God has, the enemy has a counterfeit. Yes, 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 yes. And we are living, because we are living in these last days, the enemy has ramped up his efforts. Mm -hmm. He has really ramped them up. Mm. He doesn't care who, how, when, but yet if he's like, you know what, I want to deface everything of God. Mm -hmm. I don't want nothing of God left pure, undefiled, and holy. So if I can come up with a hookup culture that these young individuals are going to fall into, because you figure left on their own, they're already going to make a bad decision. Mm -hmm. We're bent that way, Mm -hmm. right? But now I'm making it that much easier. Um, So what do you say to them? It's a, you know, that's that Bible study. You Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? That definitely has to happen, whether it's on marriage, whether it's on salvation, because it's all together. It's like, where do I want to start? And the bottom line is that doesn't bring fulfillment. It -hmm. It doesn't bring happiness. That was the doctor's point. Exactly. If you're in there crying because of what you're doing, Mm -hmm. because you know Mm -hmm. there's still that void that hasn't been filled. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I slept with this one. I slept with that one. No. And and you're still just as lonely. Now, now, now Dave, you mentioned, you know, God's heart being broken, but the reality is your heart's going to be broken. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, this is what talk, this is the doctors talking mm-hmm. about, right? Like people mm-hmm. are coming in, their hearts are broken. Like mm-hmm. they're broken. They're broken. Uh, um, and it's like, wow, your brokenness combined with more brokenness is right. crazy. Mm-hmm. All right. Let me give you something else that's out here uh, trending online. Oh my. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> so in um, what they would term maybe the manosphere or something they call the red pill community, uh, which is why my channel is called No Pills. Okay. Okay. This podcast is called No Pills, No Blue Pills, No Red Pills, kind of like, you know, blue pills, a liberal approach to mm. dating, red pills, a more conservative approach to dating. So to say, I use those terms lightly. Um, I think, you know, Love is fully scripted mm, mm. <laughs> in the owner's manual. <laughs> 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 All right. So with that being said, <laughs> there's this idea, okay? Both of you need to hear this, all right? That if a man can make enough money, okay, um, this kind of puts him into a uh, uh, kind of a high earner, ideal man's man, top echelon mm. type man, mm. okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, then he kind of earn, he earns the right to cheat. He earns the right to have multiple partners. Mm. Characteristics, he's six foot tall, makes six figures, this type of thing, right? Six, 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 mark of the beat, you know, this type of thing, right? <laughs> it's devil, it's devil numbers we're throwing out. This is what I'm like, are they really doing this? Six, six, six. How does that sound to you? When you married 21 years, first First date, you're praying and you're hearing someone say, yeah, I can, I can be a, I can be a, I can have more than one wife if I earn enough money. If I'm tall enough, if I'm handsome enough. Thoughts. I want you to know this is being accepted, accepted in current thought processes of men and women. So you're saying it's being accepted by the person who possesses that stuff. And, and on the other, wow! So the, the male is accepting it, and the female is accepting it. And there's a, there's, a, there's another thought that goes along with this, but I'll just I'll give it a second just to to, to, to permeate your minds. Um, how I'm, does that sound to you? I'm wondering how that happened. How 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 did that become acceptable? Like, um, wow! Why? 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 What makes what would make a young lady accept hmm, that because somebody is six, six foot tall, six, over six feet tall, over six feet, high on her, six you, know, you know, six money's pack. no issue. Yeah, got a built, six pack. Mm-hmm. Uh, all I could think is maybe she's inexperienced. I mean. So let me ask you a question. As a female, okay. okay, as a woman, as a wife, do you think that there would ever be a situation where you wouldn't feel, I don't want to put words into your mind, but like diminished, less valued, not appreciated, not loved mm-hmm. by having a husband just step out on you? Like from time to time or frequently, like just be with another oh, woman. Yeah, like, that, that, would def- that would do something. That would do something yeah. mentally, you right? know? Yeah. Um, yeah, it would make you, you question um, your value, mm-hmm. you know. 
to him. To him. Obviously. Obviously to him. Yeah, right, right, right. More. And then uh uh maybe to to one's own self. Like, man, I'm not good enough. Right. What's up with that? Um, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. certainly. Mm -hmm. do you, now do you think you could actually happily be in a relationship <laughs> with a man who you even if he's not telling you, mm -hmm. you know it's happening ever so frequently. Like, are you at peace in that? Are no, no peace there. <laughs> no peace no there. Peace All right, there. I just want to check. I'm double no checking. Peace. No peace. <laughs> None. No peace. I'm thinking you might try to poison him. I don't know. This is this. Listen, this, this. <laughs> I'd be out. I'd be gone. You'd be gone. You would just leave. Common yeah. sense would say to leave. Yeah. What What I've seen, what I've observed, it seems like um, females are sticking around because of money. Hmm. You know. Mm hmm. Like for food, clothing, I've shelter, seen that. I've seen food, that. clothing, shelter. Come on, Dave. Yeah. You I mean, know, it's funny. No, it's, it's the, I don't want to say that meal ticket. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Before it was like, okay. you want to come up. Okay. Um, I don't want to say they felt like they didn't necessarily want to work for theirs. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Let me go, let me get my education. Let me be able to provide for myself. Daddy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But let me find my meal ticket, whether mm -hmm. it's that drug dealer who, mm -hmm. you know, or that ball player or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, that athlete. And I'm going to just latch on to them. I'll mm -hmm. have some babies by them. So now I am set. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Okay. Um, all of that is just like, when when I look at that in my head, it diminishes them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They think they're low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. They think they're coming up because I have this and I have that. But once again, it's like, as soon as he says, bye, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You don't have anything mm -hmm. unless the judge now says, you know what, if you've Would been you together will? for yeah. 10 years. Yeah. yeah. But I'm saying, but think about it though. If that, if he knew that, okay, she's just trying to play me for this, I'm going to make sure that we're not together that long where she can't mm -hmm. get anything. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's who wants to run that risk of this new mindset, this new culture or whatever. It's like, well, wait a minute. You know, it doesn't work out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it just doesn't make but sense. But if she has some babies by them, they're for forever connected. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now they are. And it's like. Yeah, but how good is that for the baby? Right. right. <laughs> or for the it's babies. It's a lose, for him. lose situation. For so, yeah. all right. Now, here's, here's, here's mm. a caveat. All right. If I could even, if I could mm. even call it that. All men cheat. Mm. So now it's like, well, listen, man. You're going to get cheated on anyway. So do you want to get cheated on by the Wally World worker? Or do you want to get cheated on by the six-figure guy? Mm. This is literally mm -hmm. what is floating around mainstream media. Like, well, mm -hmm. if I'm getting cheated on anyway, well, I might as well know. I'll be poor and get cheated on. Mm. Why, why, why not be set up and get cheated on? Mm -hmm. Now, I'll let the, let's let the men answer first, Dave. <laughs> let's, let's get on this side of the table first. You, wow. Now, now, do all men cheat? No. No. Let's repeat that again for the listeners. All men do not cheat, friends. <laughs> Right, this is a factor now. Mm. This changes, I think, the equation in someone's mind. Like, all men don't cheat. So now what do you do? So now now you're just picking between cheaters. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Right? Like mm -hmm. your, your, your selection pool is, is the problem. Mm -hmm. You're starting with the wrong selection pool. Mm -hmm. But yeah, all men, I mean, when you hear that, like... I'm, I'm, once again, what's running through my head was, or is... Can a leopard change his spots? All right, come on, take us somewhere, Dave. Come on. And if you know these individuals from the beginning, wow, once again, it's just like the sermon that we heard this morning. Past experiences play into a relationship of how you're going to be, how that marriage mm -hmm. can be also. Mm -hmm. And it's like what one of the things that stuck out was for individuals who say, you know what, you were my first, mm -hmm. right? Um, there wasn't another one. Mm -hmm. Those individuals have, because that's all that they know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that oh. bond is there versus individuals that I've been with this one, I've been mm -hmm. with that one, I've mm -hmm. been with this, and then we get together. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Go ahead. He, again, this is the doctor speaking. So okay. he's speaking from a scientific point, okay. Okay. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a different kind of bond between two people who have only been with one another, right? Versus two people who have been with several others Mercy. and then they get together. Mercy. 
it mm. is more difficult, even scientifically, right. and I can't explain it like the doctor. Pair bonding. You for them pair bonding. to, yes, pair bonding. bond mm -hmm. when there's been all these others. Others. Mm. That's the point you were trying Correct. to make? Yes. Then on the top of, I don't communicate, um, you know, the commitment Everything isn't there. Else. It's, it's that much easier. Okay, so something something you touched on. I've called, I've been focusing, I've mentioned this in another podcast, due diligence, mm. the due diligence phase. Mm. So when you were speaking, Dave, this is what I went into my mind. Like, yeah, you're not doing due diligence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you need to go vet these individuals. Haste makes waste. Mm -hmm. Why are we just sleeping with any Tom, Dick, or Harry, getting married to any Tom, Dick, or Harry, bonding with multiple people, then we can't bond with the person we, we truly have been called and designed to be with. We just need to take more accountability. When we when I hear something like, oh, all men cheat, men are cheaters, women are cheaters, women, women are no good, men right. are no good. It's like maybe the people you're picking and selecting mm -hmm. are no good. Mm -hmm. And not this all. Where are you meeting Where are you people? meeting them? Right. Mm -hmm. we, yeah, yeah. Were you at the bar? Right. <laughs> I mean, at the were, club? Were you at the club? Mm -hmm. Were you at a rave? Right, right. You know, was this somebody else's boyfriend that you stole? Mm -hmm. Someone else's girlfriend that you stole? Oh, I didn't know I worked out. Dave, you mentioned what, you know, your drug dealer? Mm. Not saying drug dealers can't change their lives, friends. <laughs> Amen. I'm not saying that. But if you if you're the the spots on the leopard are there, right? Mm. And from a spiritual perspective, I know we believe that God is the only person that has the power to make that to make change in human life, in human mind, and human heart. Mm -hmm. So here you are out there expecting, I don't know, maybe uh what would I say? You're expecting oranges off an apple tree. Right. Right. Why are we doing that? Right. And then, then we're going to blame God, blame the institution, right? right. I mean, I'm giving up on institutions. Like, no, you, man, you need to change your tactics mm -hmm. and your approach to relationships. And as you has been mentioned here tonight, as you were saying, hey, man, go back and listen to God. Get that owner's manual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let him tell you how to mm -hmm. do it so you can do it right. Right. You know what I mean? Stop trying and to put... And get it for yourself first. Hey, man. Because then you'll have an easier time, you know, picking out that one who's also in the manual. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You become familiar. Okay, um, let me give you another one. Polyamorous relationships. This polyamorous being married to more than one person mm -hmm. at the same time. Okay, like um, polygamy. Polygamy, mm -hmm. okay. straight up polygamy. And there's okay. all these different poly. I, I can't keep up with all the different polys. All okay. right, there's all these okay. different. I can't. I'm. <laughs> I can't keep up. Right. Bible says one owner's manual. One man. Mm -hmm. One woman. Mm -hmm. Check the box. Now, there's always this argument about, oh, well, you know, people in the Bible have multiple wives. Listen, mm -hmm. Domina was right. Right. <laughs> okay. So, don't, don't, David killed some folks. Domina, right, right, <laughs> no, no. right, right. Yeah, yeah, he had multiple How wives. How he designed it is also in the Bible. And that was one and one. One and one. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, I just want to get that out there for everyone who's going to listen to this and go, oh, my brother. Mm -hmm. uh, we got that covered already. Another podcast. Stick around. Uh, mm -hmm. Go back and watch it. Um, when you guys hear polygamy, just, just in all honesty, I've heard an argument such as, for having more than like one wife in the household. Mm. Like, man, we could just split the duties. I don't always have to do the dishes. Mm. I don't have to, you know, we, we, we can help man, manage the kids. Literally, this was this. You brother. saw me just close my eyes. <laughs> you got to be kidding Brother, me. no lie. Like, like, now listen, I'm not, ha I'm not hating on the fact that if you go back in time a little bit, yo, the, the, you had servants, you had help, maids, etc. yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know if I'm going to, take on a full-blown intimate mm -hmm. sexual relationship with more than one person so I can have somebody help me with the dishes Watch and the, the kids. Dishes. Right, 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 right. And I'm just giving a, I don't know if that, does that, does yeah, that make no. any sense to you? Mm -mm, not at all. Um, I got help. They're called children, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. so, all right, you want some help? Get some kids. Yeah, some that kids. sounds like confusion and trouble to me. <laughs> confusion and trouble. Yeah. Amen. I can't see anyone not being jealous, angry. And here's the thing. So the research I did on other podcasts about this, there was not one uh, poly relationship that I looked at mm -hmm. that they did not admit to. Yeah, sometimes there's jealousy. Mm. Like I know. Well, yes, Dave. Duh. The duh, envy, duh, the, envy duh. the jealousy, the spite. Once again, all these things that say this is not of God. Yeah, come is on. now existing under your roof of anyone that says, you know what, I'm gonna take multiple wives. Mm. Just like they say they're. You can't have two queens in a castle. You can't have two kings in a castle. Yeah, you yeah, see what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. for this individual, for the man, he's like, well, I'm the only king. I'm only king. But yet, okay, when is she the queen? Okay, when is she the... You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. If that doesn't cause 
Yeah. Contention. And the owner's manual exactly. identifies that Man. as well. It's all in there. It's all in there. Yeah. It's all in there. Yeah, yeah I didn't better. Next. Oh, next. my goodness. Okay, next. <laughs> all right. next. We're moving on. We're moving on, people. Ne- next. You heard it from Dave. Next, oh. brother. Oh, my head Next. Hurts. All, right. all right. So here's the next here's the next thing I got for you guys. All right. How, how, how familiar are you guys with social media? Mm, yeah. All right. Instagram. You guys mm-hmm. know what Instagram is? Mm-hmm. Okay. Instagram. All right. So... On Instagram, uh, it's a very like, you no, know, usually high quality videos, photos, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I believe it started just as a photo app, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And customarily, everyone's on that thing naked. Mm-hmm. All right. And mm-hmm. we kind of hide the whole naked whole thing. I'm mm-hmm. just going to call it what it is mm-hmm. behind a lot of times behind like, oh, I'm an athlete. Mm. I'm doing sports stuff. I'm doing. Right. I said, no, you just run around naked on the right. screen. Let's be right. honest, right. fam. Let's just keep it a. Let's keep it a stack. Mm-hmm. Let's be a hundred mm-hmm. about this, girl, boy. Put some clothes mm-hmm. on. I think that's what's really going on. I think it's a cover up. You know, you don't come out and say, oh, I'm a hoe. It's like, well, no, I'm a. I'm a healthy hoe. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I'm being. I'm athletic, right? So, with that being said, though, there's discussion around if you're in a relationship mm-hmm. with another individual. I was, you know. Over here, no pills. You should be courting. <laughs> I had no pills. But in a relationship or you're married, mm-hmm. does your, first of all, is it okay? Is it considered cheating if your spouse has half naked pictures of themselves floating around the internet? That's my first question to you. 21 years in, give it to us straight. Is that cheating? You know what? I'm not that I'm like, yes, no, no, that's not it. <laughs> it is 21 years in you say, I belong to her. Okay. No one else needs to see me half naked. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Is it cheating though? Is it cheating? So so the young, so the young, young, the young girls, this is not cheating. I'm not cheating on you. You're not cheating on me. It's, it's just, it's just social media. mm -hmm. It's just an Instagram. It's just a, it's just a picture. Mm -hmm. You know, no one's touching me. No one's, you know, right. It's it's just a photo. I am not being unfaithful. So oh, this it, unfaithful. Uh, talk to me. So in your mm. in your marriage, if twenty one years, would you consider this unfaithful? If you saw Rocky put up, started, you know, she wanted to get be a teeny bopper, mm. get back into the vibes. Like, oh, got some nice pictures up. She's poof, poof, poof. let's see, even if it's form fitting, you know, uh, uh, even suggestive. Mm-hmm. But she's not out with another guy. How how do you and, and vice versa for Dave if he was doing it too? Just what would be your instinctive, honest thoughts, feelings, emotions about that? You're saying Rocky because you said. It's cheating. It's unfaithful. It's unfaithful. It's definitely unfaithful. unfaithful. I'm thinking of some people I know that I've seen like that. <laughs> Come on. Don't, don't name drop. Don't name drop. No <laughs> name drop in here. But let me tell you, it's definitely unfaithful. It's unfaithful. It, it, it does violate the commitment. No, I may not have touched him and he may not have touched me, you know, physically, but he touching me with his eyes and mm. I'm putting it out there for him to touch. Come on. Mm. You know. Okay. Yeah, not okay. Yes. Because doesn't the Bible tell us that didn't Jesus himself tell us in the Bible mm-hmm. when you've already done it in your heart? Yeah, when you looked upon a woman mm-hmm. lustfully, you've already committed you've adultery, already committed adultery, adultery, adultery in your mind. Yeah, just with the, just with the look. There you have it. So here you are. I, I'm as male or female. I'm encouraging you to commit adultery. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, being that stumbling block. I'm being as you were saying. Yes, you as you, so, you just said. Yeah, stumbling yeah, block. It's definitely, I mean, think about it. That's what it leads up to, right? Mm, come on. Most people look at it as, oh, I didn't do the act versus I'm causing, you know, you're looking a little closer at this uh, picture now. Yeah. No thoughts that mo- will take men that run through their heads yeah, is, hmm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah. I've undressed you. You've already shown me enough. Yeah. And now I'm just. Yeah. Opportunity is always e- missing, right? Exactly. That's Opportunity. it. So yeah. it's like, would you want to do that? And then you wonder why off the subject that rapes and everything else go up. Mm-hmm. You see or what I'm divorce. saying? Or divorce. Or divorce. Yeah. yeah, because you've divorce. shown not thinking, not realizing, yeah. you know, not counted the cost. If I do this, yeah. what's going to happen? Listen, all the feminists are going to tear you up right now for this. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Because, you know, here's what they heard. I know what you said, but here's what they heard. Did Did Dave just say that because of how I, how I dress? I deserve to be raped? No. Mm. David did not say that. No. Right? But he's saying there is a correlation, mm-hmm. right? There is a correlation that I think a lot of people don't want to realize mm-hmm. that how we carry ourselves attracts a certain type of energy in person, mm-hmm. spirit, mm-hmm. <laughs> activity. And friends, when I went to, when I was in the world and I was going clubbing, there was no woman in that club or man in that club dressed modestly. Mm. Okay. 
I, you don't go down to the strip club and they got turtlenecks on. Right, right. Come on, friends. Let's be honest. Right. Uh, females that, that that are in sex work are not running around like little house on the prairie. Right. I just don't, I, I don't have patience for this right. level of kind of almost blatant, like playing dumb. Mm-hmm. This is not to say that anyone deserves or earns uh, to be sexually assaulted. Okay, that's not what we're saying. But they, I'm with you, brother. There is a direct correlation. Yeah. Okay, between our how we choose to behave and carry ourselves and what we're going to attract. Mm, modesty. D- I'm, I'm going to ask you this, Rocky. How much, 21 years of being married, how much influence does Dave have over your dress, over your physical appearance, your outward appearance, as far as what you put on and when you go out and how you dress in general? How much authority? Yeah, in- influence, impact. How much of that do you take? Or does does he have any authority? He does, does he have any, in, in, like, and what, and what is... Are there limits to it? What does that look like? Just kind of unpack that for us. Like, mm-hmm. I'd take all of what he has to say. Okay, so if you put something on and David would have say, Dave was like, yeah, can you take that? I don't, I, don't, I don't like that. Yeah, it's off. It's off. It's off. No fight. No fight. You haven't lost your identity. Listen. You're not going to die. I'm not going to die. I haven't lost my identity. I your independence. Pre- Listen, iron sharpens iron for me. Okay. And so I appreciate somebody like, mm, that's not quite it. Mm, oh, mean. okay. Thank you. Mm. I wasn't even looking at that part of it. Okay. You know. Is David insecure by wanting you to not wear something revealing? No. No. How would you? I think he's protective. He's protective. That's um, a good thing. That's a good thing. Not a negative thing. Not a negative thing. Listeners, listen up. And I, I think uh, he's wise. He's that. wise. I think he's exercising wisdom do and, you, and judgment. Do you find, as a woman, would, would you find any of that attractive that my husband wants to protect me and only wants to be seen by me? Listen, I don't know a woman who doesn't want to be protected by a man. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. maybe they exist. I'm sure they do. Right. Yeah, I'm sure. It's, it's, it's not me. It's, it's, there's always outliers. <laughs> right. yeah, there's always outliers. Amen. There's always outliers. Okay. So you, you're not, you're not threatened or offended by that. If no. David wants you to dress a certain way. I'm not. Offended. Or as, okay. Dave, what do you think? If, uh, let's, let's play. Let me, let me tell you what's going on out here, brother. In these streets, brother. Okay. <laughs> Uh, these young ladies just saying like, hey, no, no man can't tell me how to dress. I'm going to wear whatever I want to wear. When I want to wear it, he's not going to oppress me. Mm. Okay. I am a, I'm free. Okay. Yeah, and I'm, I'm assuming a lot of this has come out of, you know, part of this has come out of the sexual revolution, et cetera. We can get into all the psychology. You know, I'm not that guy. But what are your thoughts on that? When you, would you have married Rocky? Had she been on some, you ain't gonna tell me what the dress, what the wear. I'm, I'm gonna post, I'm gonna post my naked Instagram photos. I'm gonna wear whatever I need to wear, whatever however I want to wear it. Show my body off, and we're just gonna be happily married. No, no, <laughs> would not have married her. Okay. Um, do I believe that the two become one? Yes, I do. Okay. What does that look like? You know what I'm okay. saying. So mm-hmm. then, when we start looking at it like that, it's almost like. How in the manual, <laughs> not my will, but thy will be done. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. With God, mm-hmm. the Father. Mm-hmm. And was it the Son's will? Because His will was in the Father, they, it, they were in agreement. Yes, yes. It yes, was yes. never yeah. Christ was trying to act independently. Come on. So you figure now, even with this relationship, are we two individuals yes we are mm-hmm. with one purpose we can have just like you know we're, we're trying to make it to heaven yes. we're trying to follow yes. this owner's manual yes. so i'm not going to get upset and mad at her because she's telling me rah, rah, rah. when my will is lost in his and her will is lost that's not going to happen mm. she may see the wisdom in saying dave you shouldn't put that on you shouldn't do that mm. and hopefully i have the humility mm-hmm. to say you know babe you're right Okay, Thank so, you. so you just touched on something that you're saying that door swings the opposite direction as well. It's not just a man, the husband telling the wife what to or not wear, yeah. but the woman has equal authority, right. influence to say, hey, babe, you got mm-hmm. to gotta take that off. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was, uh, when my wife was alive, I uh, I had this happen to me. So mm. here's a oh, She told you to take something off. Oh, oh, yeah, she did. Okay, okay, okay. all right. Okay. It was kind of shocked me. I was a little thrown about what? I just, mm. <laughs> what? Excuse me? I don't. I didn't, I didn't see myself as this immodest man running around, you know, right? But um, I don't know if you guys know about this, but gray sweatpants. Gray sweatpants? Great. Okay, there's a whole thing about gray sweatpants. Oh. And 
and how they imprint on the genitalia, oh, okay, et cetera, okay. yada, 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 this whole thing, right? So I had a pair of gray sweatpants that I wore around the house, blah, 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 I love them. Never, never really, I, at some point I bought them and probably what it was outside in them, you know, but anyway, so I go to go outside one day and I had these gray sweatpants on. So my wife's like, nah, you got you got <laughs> <laughs> Say, uh-uh. Player, player, those gotta come off. <laughs> hey, hey, player, hey, man, <laughs> where you going? I'm going to the store. <laughs> nah, not like that. <laughs> You're not gonna be a stumbling block. Right? <laughs> and, 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 and I'm gonna be honest for all my okay. So all all the female listeners out there, everyone in this space, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest. There was there was some rebellion in me. Mm, mm. There was a little bit of like mm-hmm. get out of here. Mm. Like I kind of want to just do what's this nonsense? You know, like I need. I just surrender, brother. Mm. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. it's like, I, I, why would I want that done to me? Now, mind you, when we met in the world and we didn't have any uh, concept of modesty, mm-hmm. right? But now we're married and everything. But that door does swing both ways. It does. And it needs to be equally mm-hmm. respected. And uh, yes. yeah, you got to take those off, man. You ain't going outside like that. Let's, yeah. <laughs> let's go. And to your point, Rocky, you know, uh, to your point, shouldn't I trust and respect mm-hmm value mm-hmm. my spouse this person that i said i'm going to be with for the rest of my life mm-hmm. their input mm-hmm. who else am i trying to a- appease right like it's god first then you mm-hmm. like in that order mm-hmm. it's god first then mm-hmm. you and if this is making you unhappy mm-hmm. it's making me unhappy it's making us unhappy mm-hmm. and i just don't know why this has just slipped away i know why because we've gotten so f- we're getting so much further away from the manual it's like man this is a I, why, how am I married to a person who I don't respect and honor? Like you mentioned, Dave, hey, they got to be level-headed. I got to trust them what they got going on. And now when, they, when they're giving me some correction, mm. some rebuke, some mm-hmm. chastening mm-hmm. in love, now I'm fighting against it. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I think that Go ahead. one of the, the things that the doctor pointed out, he had all these statistics mm-hmm. about what has happened to us as a society sexually mm. since the introduction. It's 2008, the introduction of the smartphone. Okay. And so that has taken us to places that mm. we could never have gone, you know, without s- smartphones, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Launched us into yeah, that's a whole nother the topic, abyss. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to let me jump down to this one. Can two persons of the opposite sex be friends? <sighs> and if so, if 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 no, why? If yes, why? And if yes, how so? Like, what does it look like practically? Okay, so can two people, opposite sex, be friends? You guys have been married 21 years. I'm sure there's some relationships along the way. You either had the break, kept, whatever, maybe not. I don't know, but I'm going to find out right now. <laughs> but if if it's just like straight no, tell me why. If it's a yes, then kind of give me some parameters as to what that looks like, you know? Because I think, let's be honest, I think most, probably a good amount of infidelity had probably had, had to start with some type of relationship. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So what are your thoughts on that? Can persons of the opposite sex be friends? What does that look like? Yes or no? I think so. Okay. Rocky but, says yes. <laughs> but, but. Okay. Then, <laughs> but. There's a caveat. <laughs> but. Um, you know, there's, there's, uh, this is your term, actually. There's a healthy distance. Okay, you a know? healthy distance. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, healthy distance. Yeah, and I don't think respectful difference. A, maybe. a respectful, respectful difference. healthy distance. Yes, yes. And I don't think that every male and female can be just friends. Okay, all right. You okay. know, there's some there's some males that I just cannot be friends with. There's some females that he just cannot be friends with. Mm-hmm. But then there are ones that you can be friends with. Listen, let with. me say something real quick. Let me tell you something, man. Sometimes, Brother Dave, man, listen, I, I am a heterosexual male. And sometimes I see a guy, I'm like, man, that brother's attractive. Get him away from my wife. And it's like, well, why, why, would, I, why would I want to encourage that? Like, <laughs> and I say it in terms of the level of respect. If you can't yeah. respect us, then yeah. I can't be friends with you. Okay. It, it doesn't even have nothing to do with attraction. I see attractive guys and it's like, and? Okay. Okay. You know, so it's more of. How they carry themselves? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's more what I'm talking about too. Because when I'm thinking attractive, I'm thinking about what the kids would call what we call it riz oh. and charm and mm. swagger and, mm. you know, this kind of like, oh, you know, uh, this confidence about themselves, mm-hmm. you know, maybe flirtatious. And when I see that, if, if you're together. that way with a married woman, you're no good. Mm, come on. You know, come on. You, no, 
We're not uh, gonna be friends. We're not gonna be friends. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you saying if you see him carrying on like this with other women, mm-hmm. even married or unmarried alike, it's like, well, why are we gonna be friends then? Right. All right. So you're using some. You're not you, friends caliber. You're not friends caliber. So you're using some level of discernment here mm-hmm. about who you're gonna be friends with of the opposite mm-hmm. sex. Mm-hmm. Okay. Dave. I've always said no. no. Okay. All right. There was, even before marriage, mm. my goal, my aim mm. towards the opposite sex was, especially if they were attractive, mm. I want to get with you. Come on. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so I am being friends for all the wrong reasons. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. what runs through most young mm-hmm. men's heads. Mm-hmm. Ooh, look at her. Oh, mm-hmm. Let me try to get up with her. Mm-hmm. You, so that same carries with individuals i feel and so now it's one of those you know i have to tell our daughter this you know we got to look out you can't be friends with everyone with everybody because the intentions the motives and everything else so being on guard you gotta inspect and know why and you know but typically mm, it was it, for me from what i had seen the friends the guys that i hung out with mm-hmm. you know what Same i'm saying thing. That's what really helped to shape me saying, no, it's, it's for me, it's not possible. It's not possible. It's not possible. And, and not you possible. almost want to say, do I want it to be? No, I'm better off having dudes as friends. You, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Safety. Safer, safer. Exactly. Safer. It's like, I don't even want that, you know. So I think, I think the modern, the modern world we live in, I know I dealt with this in my marriage. Um, yo, you have coworkers. Mm. Okay. And you end up, Society now puts us in positions where we we interact with people of the opposite sex on a fairly regular basis. In some cases, mm-hmm. you might be in office, you might be out of office. To the point, to the point that there's even a term, a phrase that's thrown around like "I got a work wife" or "I got a mm-hmm. work husband." I'm like, no, 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 no work wives, no work husbands. Yeah. One wife, one husband. My position. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that speaks for itself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You are now involved in a polygamous relationship. <laughs> 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 if you got another wife anywhere else, another husband anywhere else under any kind of context, it's like, no, brethren, this it's is this ain't this ain't it, brethren. This ain't it. So um what do you think are are there just some natural relationships and friendships that kind of spurn out of those interactions when you're at work, you're at the job, um, maybe even at the church? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You're having to work and do things together. Like these these relationships are real in my life. Go ahead. So can it happen? Yes. Let me stress. Can what happen? Oh, the you friendship. Can, right. Okay. The friendship. Okay. For me, mm-hmm. and I don't, especially younger, extremely shallow, I had, there had to be no attraction. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now, if you were unattractive to me, we could be friends all day long. <laughs> Right? No, I'm, I mean, that's so, just... So the, so the ugly girls are cool to be friends yeah. with. <laughs> Safety. Safety. Right? But not they weren't just... They just weren't attractive to, you. to me. Okay, all right. So this you not see what I'm saying? Okay, yeah, so... Yeah. yeah, attractive and, to somebody else, but not attractive to exactly. you. Exactly. So right. your question is, those kind of relationships that form naturally, you mm-hmm. um, not pursued by either party, yeah, you just in each other's presence. Yeah. yeah. Can What's the question? Can you... Can you just be friends? Yeah, I, I think so. Can you be friends? You know, now, I mean, some people you only see at work. You only deal with at work. Mm-hmm. Um, on you, work issues. On work issues. Mm-hmm. And maybe there's a, you know, a genuine just, you know, mutual respect, friendship. You, you would do for them. Maybe they needed something or they didn't have money for lunch. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it goes five dollars or. Um, but I think. You have see, work friends. Well, yeah. But once again, you sit there and say. Not attractive. Again, not attractive. <laughs> See, <laughs> now that, <laughs> see when I mentioned the whole, hey man, that guy's too attractive. <laughs> this mm-hmm. is this the, it's, it's like it's, yes, it's the that's mind. real. It's that's the, like mm. yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Let's be honest. If 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 Dave had a a, a, a work friend, colleague, anything, a female friend who was really really attractive, like are you it's not not that you're being insecure but maybe someone would argue this as you were being insecure but does it make sense like is it like like man you look a little attractive why are you why are you right, here why are you right. always okay, in, why, I guess I could why are you always in my man's face like mm-hmm. what you what, what you need mm-hmm. you know what i mean you know pump your own gas what's going on right, here you know right, what i mean like, right, you just type right, of thing right, right. And, and so 
I, I just wonder, you know, I, I think, I think there's, I think the reality, I think the reality of the situation is we do run into just different contexts. Mm-hmm. Di- there's different contexts where we do have people of the opposite sex that you end up having dealings with. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone's not little house on the prairie. Everyone's not being homeschooled. Mm-hmm. Everyone's not just at the farm and I'm away. And it's like, who, who are you running into? Right, right. Right. It's 2024. It's like, if you take public transportation, you may see the same person every morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you go into the gym, I mean, this is all these different co-ed environments mm-hmm. that we're in. I just think we have to be wise about the level of, I guess, quote unquote, friendship. Mm-hmm. How much should healthy I... Distance. Healthy distance. Healthy mm-hmm. distance. So what does that look like? That looks <sighs> like... Um, I think, I think, well, and and maybe I have a a little different um, intuitiveness about it than a male. Maybe females do. I don't know. But um, I think males got it, too, because I I, I initially heard this with a male, a pastor. Uh, He said that he this female wanted counsel from the pastor. And when she asked for it, she had a little bit too much twinkle in her eye. Mm. And so he assigned it to an elder or somebody Mm -hmm. else. I think you kind of know. You got a discernment on your part. There's there's some discernment. Like this this person. You you pick up on a flirt. This person's into me. Right. This this person's attracted to me. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You pick up on a flirt or Mm -hmm. on on the way they interact with you. Um, There are... Growing up, guys that I knew they liked me, but I had a boyfriend. Mm-hmm. But you know, mm-hmm. you just pick up on it, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and those are mm-hmm. things, like I said, you steer clear of. Mm-hmm. When mm-hmm. when when you see that, then the distance needs to become healthier. Okay, you know? yeah, <laughs> further. Mm-hmm. Uh, David, um, uh, healthy, what does healthy look like to you? Well, you said no altogether, but I guess you still run into situations where you have coworkers or whatever. So what, right. in practice for you, what does healthy look like? Healthy looks like, you know, if, especially if I can limit, let's say, for instance, we have a home office, okay. right, mm-hmm. that we have to definitely go every week, every Wednesday, one day out of the week for case conferences. Um Oh, you're talking about your job. Yeah, I'm talking about, you know, I'll use that as an example. Okay. And let's say this place were filled with attractive women. Okay. Right? I have to go on Wednesday. And then there are other times where I may have some paperwork to drop off this, that, and the other. And I can do that whenever during the week. Okay. But if I'm saying a healthy distance is I need to go as least limit my exposure during the week as much as possible. Right? right. So that may say, oh, I'm just there on Wednesday. When everyone else is there, so, you know, we're talking about this, discussing these patients, whatever. And when it's over, I'm gone versus, you know, I show up on this day, drop off some paperwork. Hey, how you doing? You know, you see what I'm saying? Now I increase this time. That's not that healthy distance. So I need to decrease if knowing this is what's in the office. Okay, so we're talking about time spent together. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. limiting the amount exactly. of time, mm-hmm. your, interaction. You, uh, interaction, the mm-hmm. amount of interaction you're having with this person, that it's not constant, mm-hmm. it's not every day, mm-hmm. right? it's not all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> giggle, 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 laugh, laugh, laugh. Mm-hmm. Um, really becoming best friends because here's, here's let me here, here is a a really practical danger that can happen, a reality. Most people spend more time at work than at home. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you figure if you have a work wife, quote unquote, a work husband, quote unquote, that you're literally spending more time with than your real actual spouse, mm-hmm. that can become problematic. Mm-hmm. Just from a time distance, I'm of the opinion that you can put two people of the opposite sex on an island, they could be unattracted to each other. If you leave them there long enough, mm-hmm. there will be a population of people there when you get mm-hmm. back. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, well, okay. Right. It's a little tribe of you guys now. Right. Yeah, man, we got bored, you know. Mm-hmm. We just I think just naturally God in the in the ideal original plan was like, "Hey man, it's not good that man should be alone." Mm-hmm. I think we're playing with fire if we uh take hot coals in our bosom and expect not to be burned. That's true. Hmm. That is true. All right. Um I got two I think there's two more things I want to just unpack here. All right. Let's talk about is it realistic for modern couples to expect traditional outcomes when we're not always playing traditional roles in our marriages? Now, I think this is interesting because you guys started out in a non-traditional role. And when I say traditional role, I mean like woman staying home, mm-hmm. man's out working mm-hmm. and 
maybe you're homeschooling and it's like, this is a traditional, like, you know, I think what we would term old school traditional relationship, wife's home, cooking, cleaning, taking care of, I mean, she is the, the, the home entrepreneur holding mm-hmm. it down. Mm-hmm. Um, and the man's out there fighting the world every day, getting that done. I'll use my, I'll start with myself as an example. I did not expect complete traditional outcomes in my marriage because I didn't have complete traditional inputs. We both worked. Mm. So I expected to do some of the household duties mm-hmm. at the house. Mm-hmm. I was going to mop, sweep, clean. Like I, I, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to cook dinner sometime. Mm-hmm. We're going we're to share some of the household re- uh, responsibilities because we both just banged out 40 hours this week. Mm-hmm. Nobody want to do it. I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it has to get done still. Um, how do you feel about those roles? And Rocky, I want to ask you specifically, because so many women, uh, maybe feminists and non-feminists alike, are kind of like, ah, I just don't want to be a stay-at-home mom. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just not what I want to do. Mm-hmm. I want to go out and make money. Mm-hmm. I want to travel. Mm-hmm. I want to vlog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I want to enjoy life. I don't want to be a slave in someone's kitchen. Mm-hmm. Uh, not even my own. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know if I like kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just telling you what I'm, what I'm seeing, friends. I don't even, I don't even know if I like these little so devils, listen. man. So, <laughs> I like you, money too. Okay, right. Because I think this is a perfect question for for you guys specifically, and especially for you, Rocky, because you transitioned mm-hmm. out of a non traditional role mm-hmm. and went into a full mm-hmm. traditional role. And give me, give us your feedback on that, because. <sighs> so let me tell you, um, I never imagined that I would be the the traditional mom and wife that I am now. Okay. Never imagine it. Okay. Always. And what, what does that look like? When you say that, what does that mean? Like, what do you do? Like, you stay at home? I stay at home. You homeschool? I homeschool. You cook, you clean? I cook, I clean. Come on. And I raise the kids. Raise the kids. You got a good. great job at it, by come, the way. Come on, Dave. Just, all right. Uh, you, uh, you, you, you have a garden? I have a garden. Got some dogs? Got some dogs. <laughs> Even got some bees. Got some bees. <laughs> Got a cat? <laughs> got a cat. Got, got a cat. And got kids. Oh, come on. This is. Got kids. All right. So I never. And this is the admin controller. I mean, this is the, the contract. The contract admin, administrator. Ad, administrator in Los Angeles getting money. Getting a lot of Get, money. Getting a lot of money. Getting a lot of money. And now you're out and here. And did I like the money? I like the money. Come on. Do I miss the money? Oh, yes. Okay. The money. Yeah, it's a little easier, right? However. However. There's something that I value more than the money. And so. Um. It became apparent mm-hmm. and evident that something needed to switch, mm-hmm. right? And I don't think it's just my story. I think we can look at society mm-hmm. and see a change in society that has come with mm, non traditional roles. So, for me and my family, uh, particularly, um, my kids started getting older. Mm-hmm. Just like you mentioned earlier, sometimes we're at work more mm-hmm. than we're at home. Yes. They were at school mm-hmm. more than they were at home and, and left in daycare after mm-hmm. school while we were working. Yeah. You know, picking them up at six o'clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're home, you know, with us and awake right. two, three hours. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I began to notice character deficiencies. Mm-hmm. Um it was just it, it it was not right and as much money as I was making, I couldn't continue to sit behind the desk and watch my children's characters disintegrate as Mm. they got older before my very eyes. And so Mm. it became dirty money, Mm. really, for me, Mm. and I had to let it go. Mm. Um, And so I did. Mm. And so that when I, even in retrospect, uh, our salary was cut in half. Come on. And uh, in retrospect, I can't say that I, I, I served us the short end of the stick. We gained mm. in it. Come on. Maybe not money, Come but on. we gained. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. There's eternal weight to some things. Mm-hmm. And so that was the consideration. And what, uh, would you, what would you say to the young lady who's, um, who's saying, I just don't want to, I don't want to be a housewife. <laughs> like, I'm just not about being a housewife. Would I would say, say that... Um, Wow, at, at, at what expense, mm. you know, at what cost? Mm. Um, if, if there's a scripture in the Bible that alludes to the fact if you gain the whole world and lose your soul, lose mm. the soul of your family, your children, yeah. was it worth it in yeah. the end? What have you profited? What have you mm. really profited? Um, Here we go. And so I would just ask that that young lady 
consider the big picture, not big picture. just the here and the now. Do you think it's selfish? Absolutely. I think it's selfish. I think it's selfish. It's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. It's definitely a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to realize that women, mothers, are shaping the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Shaping the world. And mm -hmm. I think the devil has done everything in his power to remove mother and father Absolutely. over children so he can raise them, so that he can train them, so that he can educate them. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing the terrible outgrowth of that mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. every day. Hand that rocks the cradle rules the world, right? Come That's on. That's the saying. <sighs> wow. Mm. That's heavy. That was heavy. Um, Dave, any thoughts on this before we move on and close? Any, any thoughts on this topic as far as being the state? I mean, first of all, let me say this. You, you got behind the decision. I don't know if it came. It was, I'm assuming it was a mutual Absolutely. decision that you both made together. But uh, there might have been many of men who would have said, nah, you keep working. Mm. <laughs> we, them kids going to be all right. You mm. keep. We got to pay these bills. We got to pay this mortgage. We need your income. Let's not make any sacrifices, any change. Yeah, that, you know, in the beginning, it's like, oh. Because like I said, you don't realize how easy and comfortable you are mm -hmm. when two right are coming mm -hmm. to the table mm -hmm. um you talk about it that's another thing but yet two are still working yeah, 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 yeah. when it finally happens then it's like right, this is real now a few let <laughs> few, I, few, I, few less zeros right i, I <laughs> have to a few less keep working i mm. can't get sick all these thoughts run through your head yeah yeah and you know now it really becomes lord help me you know, you're always, mm -hmm. you've always been the one sustaining. Mm -hmm. Once again, your manual mm -hmm. points that out. Mm -hmm. Now I have to truly believe. Yeah. Because the enemy wants to pervert and put all kind of, he wants to whisper in your head and everything else. And so it's like, you know what? Do I enjoy being tired and everything else? I enjoy it from the mere fact that because of the blueprint, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. is working. Okay, what did he tell man that, you know, the sweat of your brow? Oh, man, mm -hmm. I, he never said it was just going to be a piece of cake. Right. You know, so yeah. it's like, all right, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I got to do this. Yeah. Through his strength, yeah. I can do this. And because he said it, then he promised also man. what he would do. So that's the beauty of it. Because like I said, we wake up every morning and it's like, Lord, thank you. Look at the blessings. Look at the blessings that you continue to bestow. Six years of making that transition right, with homeschooling and everything else to say, we're not in want. You know what I'm saying? We're yeah. not lacking yeah, 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 to the yeah. point where it was like, oh, we made the wrong decision. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. I need to go back. Yeah. Um, God's way is the best way. Amen, amen. <laughs> Let me amen. just say it like amen. that. Amen, amen. Okay, so as we close, is marriage easy? No. No. Okay. Um, ever, hit, ever hit any rough patches? It's yes. rough patches. Okay. All right. Ever want to give up? Well, there have been some really uh, tough, rough patches. Tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh. And listen, I think I remember getting some counseling once that says, you know, listen, you you don't even entertain the thought the thought the of divorce. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't don't even yeah, don't even don't don't speak it. Mm -hmm. Don't talk it. Don't entertain mm -hmm. it. So I think that's good counsel, friends. Mm -hmm. um, would you? As you look back over the course of your marriage, do you would you say it has trended upward or downward? Definitely upward. Definitely upward. Mm -hmm. So there's some hope for us. It can get better over time. Absolutely. Oh, if you put the work in. Put the work yes. in. You put the work in to get better. Put over that time. manual to use. Mm -hmm. Put the work get in. Get on your knees. Put the manual. Die to self. Die to self. Die to self. Okay. This <laughs> is this is leading into my last question for <laughs> us this evening. Can you give us some tips on how to find spouse any tips anything you want to leave the people first i'm gonna ask for any tips and then you can have any closing thoughts that you want to maybe leave with somebody but just initially what are any tips that you would give uh, a person who's looking for a spouse and i think there's if you listen to this whole podcast there's a few things they could probably extract out mm -hmm. extrapolate out of this mm -hmm. i would say don't even begin to even look for a spouse okay. until you yourself personally um have a connection with God. Okay. You need that. You need that to to find the right spouse. But mm -hmm. even if you're not looking for a spouse, you need that. And uh, 
If you are connected with God, you will be connected with his word that will lead you to the right spouse. That means you're not going to find him like we spoke of earlier Mm -hmm. at the bar, in the club, doing Mm -hmm. that, Mm -hmm. you know, um, Mm -hmm. that we don't, you know, we're not going to find the marriage material persons doing certain things. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, I think it starts with our connection with God. And uh, we want to be that person that we're looking for. And we have to do our due diligence, uh, like we spoke of earlier. Um, and we want to find that one that is also connected with God. And, and, and prayerfully do all of, all of that. Okay, prayerfully. Years ago in college, my roommate had... Uh, this piece of paper, and on the piece of paper, the heading said, believe and be satisfied. Mm. And in essence, what this was saying was when that individual is with God doing those things that they need to do, mm-hmm. getting their lives, you know, mm-hmm. getting their house in order, we'll mm-hmm. say. Mm-hmm. And this other individual is doing what they're supposed to do, getting their house in order. When the when God is ready for those two to meet, it will happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can imagine me trying to rush that goes out, think, oh, she's the one we get married, end up in divorce. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I haven't taken the time to work on me. Dave, mm-hmm. man, you're still kind of short with people. And Dave, you know, those characteristics aren't lining up with his as he would like for them to be just like this other individual over here may not be trying to, you know, work on them. So that's always, believe it or not, stuck in my head. It's like, will that time come? If he has it for me, Hmm. it will happen. Right. So, so maybe you're not, maybe this person is not married because they're not ready to be married. Mm. Exactly. But even though I feel, but how come I, I feel I am. And it's like, well, lonely. I'm lonely. I'm tired of being lonely. Right. Mm. But are you ready to be somebody's spouse? Right. Exactly. But so, are you ready to be spouse? And do you even spouse? know what it means to be somebody's spouse? Come on, talk about it. I mean, think when you can get to that point where, Lord, I am content with where you have me. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm content. I'm mm-hmm. content with being single. But Lord, if you have, if it's your will that you know when we're married, our relationship is going to help change the world for you then, of course, he will bring that. To, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Versus if he's like, because if he knows the end from the beginning, it's like, mm, you know, you need to be single. Mm-hmm. You know, you that's that's <laughs> just, mm, I know you. You know, your heart is still hardened. And, Amen. You know, with how you want to play with me with certain things and you yeah. saying this and that and the other. Now you involve that with someone else. It's, it It is definitely a, is marriage one of those? Does Rocky help me? into the kingdom? Yes. Am mm-hmm. I helping her into the kingdom? Mm-hmm. Yes, I am. Um, mm. It is It is definitely, though, there has to be a crucifixion, mm-hmm. crucifixion of self. of self. We have to put him first. So, yeah. David. Yes. Rocky. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. It's Man, been a blessing for being us, here. For coming yes. by. No pills. Love fully scripted. This has been an awesome, awesome time together. Amen. <laughs> um, I pray that this will be a blessing to all the hearers. Take some gems um, from a couple who love the Lord, love each other, love their children, their family, 21 years together. My plan is just to continue to highlight more relationships like this. Mm. God, with God, you can do it. Absolutely. With the owner's manual, it can be done. Mm -hmm. It can be done. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Mm